What up everybody, Matt Field here, and today I wanted to talk about my motorcycle. Now, I am by no means a motorcycle expert, don't know much about them, fairly new to the motorcycle game, but I've been getting asked a lot of questions because they're like, what is it? Because to be fair, it doesn't look anything like it did when I first initially got it. And I just want to explain a couple of things, what I did, and hopefully you guys can uh, kind of understand that this is a relatively simple build for, I think, how cool it looks. So, to start it off, this is a 2013 KTM 690 Duke. So, it is a drive-by-wire, fuel-injected, with ABS, um, like 690 cc, you know, regular street bike thing. Like it's kind of, it's a supermoto-ish, right? Cause they have an enduro version of the 690 Duke. And then they also have like a, a street version. So I think they're or this, of the 690. So the, the Duke is kind of right in between off-road and street, maybe supermoto-ish. But yeah, when I got it, I was like, this is ugly. But to be fair, when I got it, I had already seen what a couple other people had already done. Some of the people like Federal Moto, I saw that they had a Daisy Duke bike that they built. And then Roland Sands, who's an epic bike builder, had a, a 690 as well. So when I saw what they were able to do with these things, I was like, oh, okay, I, I definitely can make it look cool because yeah, it was, it was not, not happening. But um, some of the things, the, the biggest thing is that I bought this from like a flat track um, fiberglass place because the whole look of this bike is supposed to be that it's a, it's a tracker bike, right? It's supposed to be like the flat track bikes. That's the look. The flat track are like sideways, leg out, just like the speedway, they're, they're insane. So that's kind of the initial look of that. So that's what this is. This is just a fiberglass tail that we kind of mated to the chassis and to the rest of the tank and everything else. So that made my life way easier. And some of these badass guys who do like real deal builds, they'll actually make this out of aluminum. In no way was I going to make it out of aluminum. One, I don't know if I'm quite good enough to even do that out of aluminum. That's some super specific skills. And two, I didn't want to spend that much time. That's another point of this bike. I wanted to spend as little time and as little money on this thing as humanly possible because it's just a toy, right? And realistically, I only use this to go back and forth to my house, from my house to my shop, which is all of like two miles. So I wanted it to be cheap and I wanted it to be an easy build. Um, I'll take this off and kind of show you guys a little bit about this then. Get my key. So this is how you can tell like race car guy stuff. Put a Zeus tab there. That's what holds the tail on. And then I have this on my key at all times. So you pull this off. Boom. And you can see in here, yeah, it's just like a fiberglass tail section. Um, I got somebody to make this seat for me. He used to build seats for the local flat track, like Harley guys. Um, so fortunately, a friend of a friend knew that this guy, he's like a retired old guy back here in Morgan Hill who just works out of his garage. And he built me this seat. So he built the, the seat pan that it sits on. He stitched it. He did the pleats. He, he notched it around the tank right here because I basically did this notching and the trimming here. But he went ahead and actually built the, the sixth seat. So underneath here, this is what uh, me and, and one of my buddies who helped me out build this thing. This is like the, the main part that we actually built on this bike. So this is some thin wall chromoly. This is what I use for like some of the bumper bars, like the little supports on the race car. So I had some leftover thin wall chromoly because I wanted it to be strong because it does have to hold your weight, but I want it as lightweight as possible. I think this is like 063 or something like that. So we bent this tail section. You can see here where we seamed it together. This was like a, a bent piece of tube and then we got in the bend to kind of be able to fit inside of this because that was the whole point there was that it fits inside. Um, you can see the Zeus tab. This is the new addition here, an anti-gravity battery. This is after I put an anti-gravity battery in this and the battery died on my motorcycle and left me stranded one night. So the guys at anti-gravity hit me up and like, dude, we make something for that, I'm sure. So that was awesome to have. But you can see uh, the battery's not even strapped in. I just have these little tabs welded and I put some felt here so that the battery couldn't move around. But the battery is held down and in place because of this ledge right here. So it can't go back from because of this and it can't go forward because of the tail. And you can see underneath, I did this little drop out um, of the lower pan. And this was a pain in the ass. 
<laughs> I made the mistake of making it out of super thin sheet metal. So welding it was an absolute nightmare. Like you can see some of the tiniest, like I, tr I had to weld that and that was straight fusion. So any gaps was just a complete nightmare. I don't even know what this is. It's like 22 gauge or something. Mistake. But I, this is all the factory wiring that's normally in the big tail section here. And it was just gross, gross, gross looking. So I cleaned it up, eliminated what I could, uh, cause it still had like all the blinker. It had the tail lights for the, um, like the, the license plate light and all that. And that's one thing that I do. As soon as I get a motorcycle, I get rid of the blinkers and I get rid of the mirrors immediately because I think that those are incredibly ugly. I know it's stupid and it's illegal but I don't care, it doesn't look good. It's like I eliminated the mirrors, the blinkers came off the front here and it was terrible. Anyways, back to this. Uh, this is the brake light and tail light. I'll turn my key on. You can see it's a tail light. Uh, I can't reach, but it's a blinker on either side. You can see the blinker. There you go. And also a tail light and a brake light. That was cool. I bought that from Federal Moto. I had saw it on their website and I was like, oh, that's a sick little piece and then kind of hides it all away. I'm sure this license plate placement, that's probably illegal too, but I don't care because it looks cool. Uh, in here, it had a full air box thing, like huge air box. It kind of came out to here and that was ugly. So I got rid of that. Oh, that's sagging. I need to tighten up that zip tie. Uh, so I just put a K&N filter kind of right on the throttle body basically that is in there and you can see kind of you can see the drive-by wire throttle body pretty cool actually that is drive-by wire and then yeah I don't know if you can see the ABS block but it's funny oh there's the ABS block it's funny because it's such a small little ABS block ABS ring here um, so these wheels are stock, uh, they're 17s. I really wanted to do, I think this flat track guys do 19s. I really wanted to do it, but I couldn't bring myself to spend like two grand on a set of wheels for a toy. I still want to, but I think that these stock wheels kind of overall set a pretty good look of the bike, honestly. Um, and then I reached out to the guys at Federal Moto and I asked them for their tire size because their bike that they built, I thought it was just, it was beefy because the stock tires are super small and very street-ish. So this is a 130 ADR 17. Um, and this in the back, look, I have to look because I don't even know. <laughs> I'm serious, I, just, I don't even know. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's a 150 70, 150 70 17. So. Yeah, it definitely made a big difference as far as the looks of it because the stock tires were so bad. Um, Renthal bars, these bars were on the bike when I bought it, so that was cool. The stock bars are, are like regular stock bar looking things. They're not very cool. Uh, I've been looking for levers for this thing. I kind of want something that's similar to the ASVs on the dirt bike, so I need to do some figuring again because I literally don't know anything about motorcycles. Um, <laughs> Up in the front, I made this plate and I put in a little LED light here. Oh yeah. Um, it was super simple. I still want to do something. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put a fender on it or not put a fender. So like I said, it's kind of still in process. Here you can see, I still need to file this down because I had the stock gauge cluster. I had a little piece broken off here that mounted the gauge cluster to it. But the gauge cluster had so much weight it was vibrating and then it finally broke this piece off. So I just got rid of it. I said, I don't even care. I don't want a gauge cluster. So there's no fuel light. There's no oil light. There's no over temp light. There's no nothing. It's like riding around on a dirt bike. So I like it that way. Simple. You don't need to know. You got to guess. Um, this is a stock fuel tank that we um, molded, I guess. I got plastic weld like the two-part epoxy and filled in all the holes because normally there's this big plastic thing that says KTM and Duke and then it, there's bolt holes here all over the tank and it bolts to the tank uh, and it hangs all down here and it was really really ugly so I smoothed the tank and I got no end customs to paint it silver this is the same silver that the race car chassis is I think so it's supposed to be um, but during that whole process, there was a little bit of miscommunication and these holes that were supposed to get body fillered in didn't uh, because it was such a long process because this, I did what I needed to do, then I got it over there and then it just sat and sat and sat and sat because it was obviously no rush. We had racing to do. So when I got it back, these needed to be filled. So 
This is one piece of aluminum that my head fabricator here at Drift Cave, Don Powers, actually made for me. Because I was all bummed out and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do and I was gonna put some tape on it, but he was like, no, dude, I'll make you something. And he made me this crazy one piece. Like, look at it, it's dented in. These are, it's broken out. Like, he is insane. So after he did that, it was sick and I was even gonna paint it this, the body color, but I decided, you know what, raw aluminum, and that finish is way sicker than painting it. So that's what we did. Then this is just the seat mount slides. Uh, the seat slides on top of that and it kind of, or it pinches itself in between here. And I think about the only other thing that I did was the exhaust. So this is all stock up until here. And then I cut it and I bought this muffler uh, it's like a motorcycle race muffler thing. Then I think these bends were even uh, part of the stock exhaust. I'm trying to remember, because it has a big cat, like a huge cat underneath here, big square box cat. And with the exhaust snaking around there, I was like, all right, I'm gonna try my best to not have to buy anything and just like flip these material. And I kind of saw, I was like, I think I can do it. I think if I cut it here and then cut that here and flip it and then do this. And I mean, I was able to get it. So it's all stainless steel, it's welded. I just bought this muffler and then I had to just make this mount right here that goes to this factory part or the factory exhaust mount. Uh, so that, was, that was pretty cool how that worked out. I was a little bit surprised, honestly. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more intricate. I wish that I gave the muffler a little bit more of an upward angle, like the Speedway bikes actually have, but live and learn. I did, with, I did it with the material that I had and I didn't really know what I was looking at, but now that I follow some bike pages on Instagram, some tracker stuff, I have a better idea of how this should be up at an angle. This is a K&N filter too. It's just a breather because it goes into the stock air box. So eliminating that air box and eliminating the cat and eliminating all this tail section, I think I saved like 55 pounds off of this bike. It was, it was crazy how ugly and heavy everything was. This front, it was heavy, blinkers sticking out the side looking like Shrek. It was no good. So being able to save some weight, make it look the way that it does, and then to have it provide as much fun as it has for me because it's such an awesome little around town smasher. I will say that riding on the freeway, <laughs> I'm like pretty much pinned sitting up. And then if I want to go faster than like 90 miles an hour, I have to tuck down. And when I tuck, it finally starts picking up. Like it'll bog the engine if you're just sitting with all the wind because it is a single cylinder, 690 CC. And I think that changing the rear tire as big as I did, totally changed the gear ratio. So if I wanted to really, what I should do is re-gear this and I think it would be a lot better. But uh, yeah, that's my bike. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a fun little around town smasher and got me really interested in some other stuff and maybe I wanna build a, a tracker. What I've been thinking about is like a two stroke, big two stroke, 500, 650, two stroke, like an old dirt bike and then converting it into some sort of street bike. But you know, that might be down the road. Till then, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and keep enjoying this thing. So I hope you guys enjoy watching and let me know, comment below. If you guys have some sick trackers and building some stuff yourself, I, I love to look at it because I'm very much in the learning process with bike building and I have a lot to learn and there's a lot of different styles out there that I really like and really appreciate, but I don't even, yeah, I got a, <laughs> it's a lot out there. It's not like drifting where I've been doing it for so long. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you next time.